What's up, owner investor? In this video, we are going to normalize earnings for Costco. So let's get into it. Um, just pop open the, the Costco model that um, you should just kind of have this as a running uh, Excel file as, as we go through the, the course. So this is what we did in the last video. We walked down from um, you know warehouses to customers per warehouse to revenue all the way down to the diluted earnings per share number. So again, like I want to be quick, I want to be efficient. Um, and I just want to know, okay, like, is this a sustainable number or is there some kind of like short-term hit that's like understating this number or sometime, some type of short-term benefit that's overstating this number, right? Because this number is going to feed into the valuation. And if, you know, Costco is over earning and, you know, the, the earnings per share like gets chopped in half next year, right? It's going to completely mess up my entire valuation. Um, and we don't want that, right? So the fastest way to figure this out, and it's not going to work every single time because not every stock is going to be widely covered by Wall Street analysts. But we're basically going to, again, like big fan of just leveraging other people's work, right? And so one website I love for this is ticker.com. And um, they have a free version. Let me just see if the free version has, okay, so yeah, the free version has two years of Wall Street analyst estimates. Um, so I'll be able to see a few more years because I have a paid membership, but you can just create an account for free and you'll get two years of Wall Street analyst estimates, right? And these guys, like all they do is like think about Costco and um, other retailers and uh, they do a pretty good job of forecasting earnings over the next couple of years. And obviously there's times when they're wrong and they're off by a lot. Um, if there's like something like, obviously they didn't forecast like COVID, right? So um, again, this is why we, you know, you, you got to diversify and not put all of your eggs in one basket and own, you know, a basket of like, um, you know, anywhere from uh, eight to 12, if, if, if you have eight to 12 stocks, if you're feeling pretty confident, you've done the research or even 20. And I mean, I think after 20 stocks, kind of the benefits of diversification start to uh, wear off, according to a lot of, um, you know, academic uh, research uh, that's, that's been coming out. And um, yeah, even, even like Buffett says to run more concentrated, but not like too concentrated, right? Like my general rule of thumb, and again, like this is just me and this is not, uh, again, financial advice. Uh, so you, you got to kind of decide on your own. Um, I like when I manage my family's money, I own somewhere between eight to 10 stocks because I've done a lot of research on these names. I've, you know, I've spent time talking to experts. Um, and so I've cultivated um, a higher level of conviction. But, you know, if, if you haven't, then you should own a wider array. And like the best basket to own is just the S&P 500, right? Like 500 different stocks. So quick little tangent there. Um, because I just want to emphasize that like some of these techniques that I'm using, they don't work like every single time. Um, and if I kind of went through like all the corner cases, I mean, this course would be like a hundred hours long. Right. Um, so you got to kind of like decide like, uh, whether some of these techniques works, work in your specific situation. So Costco is like a big company with a lot of coverage from wall street analysts. So I'm generally going to, so, you know, I'm going to come up here, search Costco, and then come up here to the estimates tab. Once you've created your account, you know, come back and do this. Um, and then I'm going to go into the EPS normalized, right? So this is, it, it might not be like exactly down to like the penny, but just roughly, right? You know, uh, like $9 and change, $11 and change, $13 and change, Cool. That's like roughly where, where we're at, right? Because um, remember, we excluded some of those like non-operating expenses and, you know, we're ignoring like interest income and interest expense because like it's not really what's going to drive long-term returns. So um, again, but like you can choose to include that if you want. That's not, there's no like one way to do that. Um, I just want to be efficient. So we can see that Wall Street analysts are forecasting, okay, uh, the earnings for sure going to 14, 15, 17, 19, 21, right? So it doesn't seem like there was any kind of one time or like temporary bit benefit or hit. So I think we can generally come to the conclusion that, um, you know, this earnings, this EPS number is like fairly normalized. You know, the one thing that I do worry about looking at Costco is that there's been 
a ton of growth ever since COVID um, and ever since inflation. Um, the idea being that like, uh, and also when uh, gas prices shot up, uh, people become more budget conscious and they shift their spend to like low priced retailers like Costco. And the question is like whether that is, um, like whether that growth trend will continue, right? Like you can see the revenue is growing like 2%, 9%, 10%, 8%. And then it's just like shot up, right? In 2021 and 2022. So the question is kind of like, where does that come out to? And, you know, what's really causing this? And and kind of the conclusion that the analysts have come to is that, um, you know, it's going to slow down to like seven, six, six percent. And, and I mean, I think that's fairly reasonable um, given kind of just uh, the fact that I, this is something we'll have to figure out in, in the upcoming modules, whether Costco is truly the low cost provider. But if it is the low cost provider and if they have the best customer value, right, because they have a crazy, uh, you know, 93 percent customer retention, um, then kind of, you know, big picture, it's like, hey, they're only like 1% share of like global uh, retail, right? Um, and, and like they sell everything from hearing aids to cars to uh, drugs to toilet paper. So they're in a lot of different categories. You know, obviously they're like, they're not going to compete with like Home Depot, um, but they're in a fair amount of, of categories. Um, so you can... I don't know, like when I think about this and I'm going to, I do like an 80, 20, I kind of like generally come to the conclusion that Costco has room to grow. Um, but that's something that, uh, we can certainly disagree on. Right. And that's again, like, I want to emphasize that again, which is that a lot of this investing stuff is subjective, right? Um, even like some of the smartest investors will disagree on how on like certain things about, uh, specific names, right? So um, there's like always this inherent fear, I think, and I, I certainly um, still have some of this of uh, being wrong or looking stupid or doing the, like making mistakes, right? And the reality with investing is like, uh, if, like we're going to make mistakes as investors. That's just the, that's just the way investing works because, and that's again, why we diversify. Um, I think like some of the best investors say, if you're right, like something like 30 to 40% of the time, uh, you're actually, you're, you know, like a really, really great investor. Right. So investors, you just kind of, it's like stand up comedy, right? Like you just got to get used to bombing and you got to get used to just being wrong sometimes, um, or a lot really. Um, but it's more about just making reasonable assumptions and making sure that we don't lose money. Right. Um, so again, like the point of this whole video, I know I went on like a couple of tangents here and there, but I think they're valuable. It's to normalize earnings and based on kind of just an 80, 20, um, it seems like wall street estimates, wall street analysts think like the growth will slow down, but it's not going to like tank. Um, but, uh, the one thing I would kind of keep my eye on is, you know, you see this significant increase in uh, merchandise spend per paid member, right? Uh, and you know, we can also calculate the, the revenue, um, per warehouse, right. Just to kind of show you a couple things that I would be somewhat concerned about, right. Divided by number of warehouses, right. So like this is increased from 210, uh, million per warehouse to, um, 270 per warehouse, right? And if we look at that case docs, the Costco case docs that was in that previous video, right? Um, like it used, it, it takes a long, it, before this like big surge in growth, it took a while for Costco warehouses to ramp all the way to, you know, 260, right? That's like their most mature cohort of warehouses that it, it took like, uh, you know, 2013 and before, right? So these are warehouses that are already way older than 10 years. Um, and then they get to like this 260 number of like average revenue per warehouse for that cohort of warehouses that were open 10 years ago before 2013. And some of those go back to like the 80s, right? When Costco was founded. Um, whereas like some of these newer warehouses 
are kind of in like this, um, you know, 150 to like 200 range. But now it's uh, all the warehouses have kind of ramped up to like 270, right? So is that sustainable, right? So this is kind of where, again, like where the rubber meets the road. And this is where you kind of do some research. And this is where some of those, like you have to kind of do back of the envelope math and, and make reasonable assumptions and make sure that you're being conservative. Um, and that's why I kind of started with the Wall Street analysts because they've obviously put in way more work than, than we have. But again, we don't want to just blindly trust what they're saying because they can also be wrong, right? Um, like, unfortunately... I think the investment business is driven by um, this like delusion of certainty and confidence, like the same way, you know, when we go to do the doctor um, or I think the best comparison is uh, when you, you know, when you're sitting on a flight um, and the, the pilot comes on and, you know, right before we're about to take off, the pilot says, Hey, you know, we're going to be delayed by 30 minutes because um, you know, there's been like some kind of uh, malfunction and like this equipment. And generally what goes through my mind is I don't want to hear any of that. Can you please just fix it? Um, and not tell me, because uh, I don't really want to be thinking about engine malfunctions when I'm in the air. It's like a similar thing with doctors where, you know, you go in and the doctor starts going into like all this technical stuff about what's going on. And I'm like, just tell me what I need to do to like fix the problem. Right. Um, unfortunately, if you want to pick your own stocks, uh, you're going to have to grapple with some of this complexity. Um, and if, you know, if, if that's not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. Um, you should just index instead, right? Um, instead of like settling for um, unwarranted confidence, which is what most money managers sell you, right? Um, with the, you know, $2,000 suit and like a, you know, a really nice tie knot, right? Uh, the reality is like investing is an inherently uncertain game to play. So um, if that's something that you cannot deal with, the inherent uncertainty that like the growth could be 7% next year or 3% or 12%. Um, this, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> this, this game is just not going to be for you, right? Um, yeah, uh, I should maybe make that a little bit more clear um, maybe er earlier on or maybe even in the um, in the train, the free training video on the landing page. Um, but that's, that's just the way this works. So uh, kind of the key things to keep in mind here with, with normalizing Costco is like, is this, is the warehouse productivity, meaning the revenue per warehouse, is that a sustainable number? And, and you know, we'll find out, right? Because um, consumers might shift some of their spend back uh, to other retailers, um, or there might be a lot of temporary benefit from gas. But generally, I'm just doing 80-20. I think the analysts uh, have done a pretty good job with Costco. So, uh, I think this is a, a, a good number to, to run with for now. Um, all right. As usual, uh, post your comments, questions, or M thoughts below, and uh, let's keep going. I'll see you in the next video.